Belfast band The Long Stay have recently released a new single called Space Race. This single is unique as it was produced and recorded digitally over Zoom. Today I'm joined in studio by Brennan McCulloch and Sean McCauley from the band to talk about the latest album and how it was produced, as well as the music scene in Belfast as a whole. So Brennan, Sean, thank you very much for, for being in the studio with us today. I wonder, could you just begin by telling me a little bit about the Long Stay, the background of the band, how you've met and how you've, how you've got together? Long Stay formed in around 1991. We met at uni, kind of like last gasp, get together, knocked a few covers together and suddenly realised there was a bit of original music there. And uh, we then sat up early and writing, get regularly writing and having writing sessions and suddenly then developed like an album worth of songs, recorded, released, and for a spell we were very lucky getting on radio and getting lots of exposure. And went out and played quite a bit and then worked towards a second album and kept playing here sporadically. Um, today we're, we're not playing out as much but we're writing um, constantly. Um, one of the reasons why we're here, and thanks for having us in, is to promote our latest single, Space Race. Um, which was stimulated by a riff that Brandon came up with. And we had it in mind for a, a different song at the time, but wasn't quite fitting um, into that song. Sean said, I have, a, I have a thought for that, you know, we'll keep that. And that's what we do, so we will have riffs and we keep it, and we may not use it for that particular song, but we'll come back to it again and go, and it fitted perfectly into Space Race. Uh, so Sean came across with the song, actually, Space Race, and uh, right with the lyrics, and we then as we almost do join together and all put our bits and pieces into it, you know. So obviously the last year has been very difficult in terms of the pandemic and in terms of being being isolated and, and locked in our homes. And you mentioned, Sean, um, about how you, you normally would get together into each other's homes and play music. Well, certainly the last year has been very difficult for all artists and all musicians and we're no different. Um, <clears throat> but what we could have done, we could have put everything in a back burner in terms of the music and left it and then come back when things had settled down. We decided not to do that. We're a creative band and we decided that we had a, a new song that we wanted to work on. Now, it was very difficult to record or go into recording studios. It was almost impossible to do that. So um, Zoom provided us with an outlet to, to be able to do that. And we meet once a week on Zoom um, from the comfort of our own homes. Matter of fact, this is the first time I've seen Sean since last, before last March in person. <coughs> and the same with Brendan, you know, we have not met each other at all. We have a lot to thank Sean from in terms of his experience and to be able to put things together and do the recordings and mix everything. And um, we provided our contributions via Zoom um, back and forth and back and forth through emails to produce the track, which is quite unique in itself to do that, uh, including the video. Brendan does a lot of the arrangement and comes up with riffs. Uh, and pitches in on the lyrics. But the main lyric master in the band would be our bass player, Brenton Donnelly from West Belfast. And what we tend to do is we write a draft of lyrics and then filter them through Brandon and we'd, we call them the grinder. And they, they come back to you kind of, you know, with, with a big tick mark, you know, they're, yeah. they're ready to go. And then we set about doing the vocal again and then we bounce it around between us. So Zoom, as Brandon was saying, allows us as close as damn it in person to say, well, what do you think of that? What do you want changed? And they express that and then go away and do the work. Use email and, and you know, digital platforms to pass it around. But I mean, it was an energetic and, you know, all things said and done, a quicker, maybe a quicker way of working. Um, you know, it's, it's nice to be in person. We missed that. It's also nice to be in a real studio. We missed that too. But as an alternative, I mean, for a studio band, I mean, things are possible still. I'm really intrigued because you, you said you've, you've been together since 1991, yeah. so 30 years, yeah. um, and I wonder, could you ever have imagined, obviously given the changes there's been in the industry, both um, for perhaps more local bands like yourselves and, and globally, could you ever have imagined that you would be sitting down in front of a, a computer screen, not together, recording and then stitching it all together in, I suppose, post-production, if you like. 30 years, can't believe it. Um, for, other, for other bands, maybe, that haven't been around as long as us, you know, I could see how going from meeting in person and playing live to then a digital presence could be quite hard, but I think we've just taken it in our stride. Our passion has diminished, has not diminished from music, you know. I mean, we're still as passionate about it. And that's the reason Space Race came about, you know. Sean sent me a, a track off at one point and I listen to it and you know from the first listen towards it and there's something special on that. And now that, that song was a bit special which gave us the drive to do something about it. They're on a space race, they're running away from the earth. These are strange days and we're counting down what they're worth. Meanwhile we've all made ways to the things we've left behind. We're coming up for air, but the song stream makes us blind. We're 
me a little bit about the, the message behind the song and, and, the, and everything that kind of entails? The message itself is a simple one, it's a climate crisis. You know, we're not by any means uh, eco-warriors or, you know, to save the planet, but we all have a vested interest to make sure that the planet is safe. And I think uh, it would be, be, be denying it to think that um, we don't care, you know. Uh, the song itself, that is the central message, climate and the climate crisis. And uh, the one uh, universal language is music. And combining that with video, you've got a very important message to get across. That's the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. And this has been the best way to do it. Um, and we've reached out to a number of climate organisations and made the, the, both the single and the video available to them to use in any campaigns yeah. that help raise awareness of the climate crisis. Uh, one of those organisations was uh, Fridays for Future. Mm -hmm. And uh, they embraced the, the single and the video and have now added it to their uh, World Improvers videos. Mm -hmm. Which was a great thing for us to have that happen because it's now global. And we've viewed by a global audience for the right reasons. So what was it really that kind of first sparked the idea to write this song about, as you say, Brennan, the climate crisis and the and the, the real emergency that we're, that we're all facing? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a futurist in the sense that I appreciate like genius, genius, and appreciate developments. Um, people like Elon Musk are doing great things and striding forward for, you know, solar energy and electrical power. But the flip side of that is the, the massive push to go to space. And a part of your brain goes, okay, but why? And when you delve a little bit deeper, there's, there's an escapology about it, but there's also a plundering aspect to it where we can go to Mars and when we get there we can plunder resources there and bring them back to Earth again. Um, alongside that you have people like David Attenborough, you know, the constant voice of reason and constant mourning and young people like Greta Thornburg. Uh, I mean my background being sociology is always kind of you know tapping into the human side of it. So kind of the flip side isn't it brilliant we're going to space and isn't it exciting but at the same time where would you use all the kind of intelligence and environmental knowledge that we have and all the benefits that can bring and point it completely towards Earth rather than spending massive resources leaving it, so to speak, um, it could make a lot of improvement. People like, um, you know, the Indian, Indian yogi Sadhguru, you know, who spends his time planting trees and, and spreading a message of kind of love and, and good energy. I mean, people like that, you know, kind of shine a light on, you know, where we should be focusing. You know, so it kind of comes from somewhere like that. Yeah. Aiden, a, wee, a wee bit of a melting pot of we're futurists and we've all this technology where the flip side is, you know, there's homelessness, there's a lot of ecological issues, yeah. recycling's not quite there, you know, closer to home issues and global issues like refugee crises and yeah. stuff like that. And now we're in the pandemic, you know, putting it all into a pot. And then at the same time, from the song's point of view, trying to keep it kind of lighthearted. I mean, the song itself has a sample from David Attenborough and it's quite funky. Uh, and, and yet the tone of, of the song is kind of foreboding, but we like to think it's quite a light ar arrangement. You know, it's that kind of sweetness and light thing we're trying to capture. We're not bashing the space race. I mean, I think it's wrong to think that we're, we're having a go with those who are trying to explore and be pioneers and go to other planets. Far from it. Um, I personally, myself, I personally think it's a great thing that we can go to other planets. But I think if we take our eye off the ball and the one planet that we have, and then Fridays for Future say it themselves, we have no planet B. Never mind plan B, this is it, this is a plan we have. Um, things that need to be, the message to be put out there. And um, if we can do that through a combination of music and video, because video is becoming, you know, the whole video industry in terms of the music side combined has driven it. Yes. Um, music was no longer what it used to be in our, in our day and age. Until when videos came along, that was it. Music took off because it has a different medium to express itself as well. So I think it's vital that, 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 that anybody who has a talent has an ability to, to get messages out there, can use that in such a way that they can get the message out even better. To move on to talk a little bit about the, the music scene in Belfast in general. One of the, um, I suppose, criticisms that, that people often level at Belfast as a music scene is that there's a real lack of quality, maybe venues and facilities for musicians like yourselves to really express themselves and for people to go and to be able to sit down and listen and really enjoy the music which is which is what a lot of people would would pre-pandemic have come out of the house to do there's a lot of venues around um some venues are more supportive of which is, would be our interest original music than you know straight you know 
rock band or cover yeah. cover band music. Probably the hardest working bars I would say for original music, which is what drives us, would be the Sunflower and the American Bar. And they're few and far between, to be quite honest. There probably needs to be a lot more of them. If people are listening to your music, then you're going to get a response from them. Um, once you finish playing it, you won't get in a, in a pub or mm -hmm. uh, background music. Um, you're going to maybe a round of applause, but people are just being courteous. Yeah. You know, they're not listening to the music, they're not listening to what you're doing. So if you're a creative musician doing your own original music, it's vital to have an audience that sits and listens. And, and it's great. It can be intimidating as well because uh, there's nothing more intimidating than the audience sitting close to you, in your face, listening to every word you sing. Um, and, and a lot of artists find that intimidating, find it difficult, but that's where you cut your cloth and, and, and doing live uh, performances. And if you can do those performances, you can play anywhere. I've played, you know, at the Empire Bar downstairs after the football, where everyone's, you know, we're there for the football and the drink, and and you know to get any listening at all, you've, it's kind of like a proving ground. You've 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 got to hit the right song, the right tempo, you know, catch people's attention. If you're lucky enough to do that, then you know you've got something, and that that can be you know knowing that people aren't listening and and, and, and want to do anything other than listen can also be like a, a free license to try things out and to, you know to kind of express yourself a little bit more. There's no doubt about it. You have to work a little bit less hard. You've got to listen to an audience, but you've also got to be much sharper, as in the song's got to be, you know, well rehearsed. You don't want to be fudging your lyrics. You want to, you know, whenever people are fine listening like that, you don't want to come off going, oh, I made an absolute hash of that, you know? It's very difficult to, for anybody to get up on a stage and perform. I don't care what anybody says, and even for us being around a long time, uh, there are still nerves getting up and performing before a live audience because you'll think it could go wrong and this might not happen. But Generally speaking, do you think Belfast has enough happening for maybe an older generation of, of music lovers? It's a hard question to answer. Um, if you're an older person who loves uh, new music coming through and discovering new acts, then yes. But if you're an older person who's quite established in the type of music they want to hear, then I would guess you'd probably have to go towards the big halls and the high ticket affairs for the comfort and for the access and for, you know, disability access and stuff like that there, which would be part of that kind of audience's requirements. Um, there's more could be done. Like a lot of the environments that we're playing in, it'd be very hard if you've got an issue, you know, with a, a hip, bad hip or a leg or something like that, it would be very hard to get up the stairs to them, uh, you know, or, or, you know, gain access. There wouldn't be lifts, for example, there. Um, and there's no guarantee of seating so yes I mean I guess a lot of especially during pandemic we're stepping back in the live performances again and, and pr promoting all over again there's going to be a restriction on the amount of people there's going to be more spacing we're going to be wearing masks why not bring on board as well as that providing you know an area where the soul was guaranteed that people who need access if you like uh, have an area they can go to and then review alongside that saying we've had time to see if there's anything like, you know, like a lift that can be provided or ramps can be put in place, you know, to promote all sections of the community. I think there needs to be more done to open it out to get uh, larger venues where yeah. people can go and feel comfortable in them where there's lots, lots of noise and there's nowhere to sit and they're worried about not getting a seat and they're going to be standing for two hours and they're going to be, you know, there is a lot more can be done in that respect and there probably isn't enough done at the minute. Do you think that Belfast has, has enough going on, not just in the music sector, uh, but, but more widely for, for an, an older generation? Uh, Belfast could do better. Um, there are organisations out there, like day centres and, and, and community-based organisations that are funded to provide, you know, bog oak sculpture and dance and, you know, arts and exposure to, like, making mosaics, for example, um, for older people. Um, and sometimes that's older people, you know, who have maybe uh, a neurological disorder or sometimes it is just like a older, older people of a certain age, like plus 60 or plus 70 sometimes. But, you know, generally speaking, there could be more done. I mean, I, I, would, I would say you're probably having to go towards organisations rather than it be something that's rather being available core already. to, yeah. you know, the offerings of, of the council, generally speaking. Brendan, Sean, thank you very much for being with me today.